This is Tom Bernanke. No, coronavirus did not get me. I'm back after a month. I was just busy at the hospital. But I'm gonna go over maximalist shoes. These were adapted by ultra marathoners, people running 100 miles at a time. Why do, would they wear something like this rather than minimalist shoes? I'm gonna give you five reasons that I love these shoes and why patients love them at the same time. And one huge reason you don't wanna get this shoe and then I'm gonna show you my favorites, the best reviewed ones out there. Ooh. Disclaimer, we can't actually give advice online, so don't listen to anything we ever say. So if you want more and more videos, subscribe. I promise I'll be making a lot more videos again now that I'm a little bit more free. So number one reason you wanna wear a maximalist shoe, look at how gigantic and cushiony these are. Yes, cushioned shoes are awesome. They do feel good. When I put these on for the first time, it feels like my foot is going into butter. Uh, check this out right here. Oh, pretend it's melting into butter. These now have a 10 year history. That's huge. That's past fad levels. If something's around more than 10 years, you know it's at least not terrible. So it could still be bad, but at least it's not terrible because terrible stuff disappears in 10 years or less. That's a scientific podiatrist rule. Uh, so these were originally adapted by ultra man marathon runners. Who wears minimalist shoes? Who wears maximalist shoes? These are great for shock absorption. They cushion, especially the front of your foot. So all the problems you have up here, so your metatarsalgia, your neuroma pain, your capsulitis, your bunions, your uh, hallux rigidus, all that kind of stuff in the front of the foot. Look at this rocker bottom right here. There's a lot of cushion that takes pressure. It redistributes it more through the rear foot and the midfoot, takes pressure off the front. These are proven, there is science. They make your knees work a little bit harder, yes. So if you have knee problems, not the best thing for you, but they have quite the history, they are proven. And that's why they're picking up steam and popularity. They look kind of crazy, they're huge. This is a huge shoe, no one's gonna argue with you on that. But that's the benefit, it is a proven shoe right now. Do you pronate? Do you supinate? It doesn't matter. Look at the back of the shoe right here. That's gonna catch you and you're not tilting one way or the other. When you land, the idea is right here, you roll across the front and it absorbs you. It does make your knees and hips work a little bit harder, but hey, you have big quad muscles, you have big hip muscles, and if your feet are getting sore, this is the one for you. It provides you a ton of stability, so supinator, pronator, hey, this is a great shoe for you. Uh, I have a doctor friend, he supinates like crazy. Nothing worked well for him. He loved this shoe. He wears it in the OR, uh, it's what he goes with. So high arched people and low arched people both love them. So a heel drop is the difference between the heel and where the front of the foot sits. So if this is flat right here, that is a heel drop. So that means your heel's a little bit higher. There's two brands that are known for these shoes. I have here the Hoka 1-1. This has about a four millimeter heel drop. So that means the heel's a little bit elevated. It's taking pressure off the front of the foot. So this area right here, it's lifting the heel. And as you roll across, it presses against the front. Uh, number two, the Ultra shoe. The Ultra shoe has a zero heel drop, so it does stretch your calf muscle. The main complaint about the Maximalist shoes are that it doesn't work your shin muscles and it lets your calf muscle shorten. The Ultra takes care of that a little bit. So you, with these shoes, you're trading off how much muscle strength you're building versus how much cushion you're getting. To me, the cushion makes a whole lot more sense. Do a couple calf lifts, who cares? Realistically, weight lifting's to build muscle. Running is not to build muscle. Running is for cardio and for getting around, for getting through your work shift. And reason number five, this is my favorite reason. The bottom line is throw the studies out the window. With all this cushion, if you're a weekend warrior, if you're just starting your workout, if you're over 40, 50, 60, your bones aren't as strong as they once were, get some cushion. The cushion will help you. Old people who have 
weaker bones, more arthritis. This is the type of shoe you want. You're not running for pleasure. You're running to get somewhere now. You want to, if you want to just get on vacation, if you want to make it through a work shift, this is the shoe that's going to help you. So our five great reasons we just went through. Now our big con, this is the one you've been waiting for. This is what should stop you from wearing these. And this is why I don't wear these all the time. Even though I love these for foot pain reasons, I love these. It feels like you're walking in butter. It takes a ton of pressure off the front of your foot. But the downside is your knees are working harder. Your thighs are working harder. When I put these on for a 12 hour shift, I feel a little bit in my thighs. My knees are a little bit more sore. My hips are turned out a little bit. My knees are turned out a little bit. Because your foot is rolling across, it's not swiveling, it's not moving as much. You're not, uh, you're absorbing that horizontal motion. So the outward twist through your hips, through your knees, it's not bad. Some people, if your feet are really hurting it, you want to use your knees and your hips. If you have good hips and knees, but if you have terrible hips and knees, so this goes for all my osteoarthritis patients. Unfortunately, this lets you take wider steps. It lets you feel better with your feet. It's almost like it fixes your foot problem to let you know how bad your knee and your hip problems are. So next, uh, watch our video uh, on fitting. Make sure you get these fitted properly, but let me go over my favorite maximalist shoes right now. So it's a huge shoe. Nobody's doubting that. Look at the bottom of that shoe. It's like walking on platforms. That is huge. So this is my number one recommended, the Hoka 1-1, the original, a ton of science. Like these guys actually put a ton of science and a ton of foot and ankle research into this. Look at the reviews here. 4.6 out of 5. 83% five-star ratings. You can't beat that. So scrolling down here, great reviews. Most of the comments say, hey, they're ugly. They look like bell-bottom <laughs> platform shoes, but the shoes are amazing. There's a couple bad reviews. It's usually bad service or something broke and they wouldn't return it. So here you have the Ultra shoe. So the Ultra is great too. The main difference is your heel is at the same level as the front of your foot. So it's a good looking shoe right there. You have other looking ones, nice colors right here. And the review 4.4 4 out of five, that's amazing. A little bit less reviews. And coming down here, they have a loyal fan base. Zero drop means it stretches out your calf muscle a little bit, keeps your calf muscles a little bit stronger. The main complaint that I'm seeing here is a general complaint of all uh, shoes like this are they can fall apart a little bit quicker because they're so cushiony. There's more stuff to fall apart in the shoe, but people love this shoe. The bottom line is if you're in the 4.5 range or higher, you are A+. Plus. They're doing amazing. The last one is the Brooks Beast. I love this one. It's a little bit cheaper, so you can see it's still a big shoe right there. The reviews, almost a thousand ratings, 4.6 out of 5. That is outstanding. That's a great shoe right there. So coming down here, the reviews, uh, it's tough as a big person to find a shoe. The tough part is you weigh a lot, plus your shoes break down quicker, plus these are big, thick, soft shoes for more to go wrong with. That's probably the number one complaint I'm seeing on Amazon here, which is true. Nobody's going to fight that. They do great. They do great with inserts, but if you're a big guy and you have big shoes, your and woman, I'm not going to exclude the woman, your shoes can break down a little bit uh, sooner, but these are great shoes. So you have the Hoka 1-1, you have uh, the Brooks Beast and you have the Ultra, three great maximalist shoe to consider. So check these out for sure.